Uh, all right, I am trying to work on getting my stuff together. And one of the core elements of that is going to be to-do lists. I've always had to-do lists, but the problem with them was always that they were out of reach. They weren't like in my face. So either it was opening up that app on your phone or opening up that website um, to whatever service you might be using. And that just always, you know, it just always got shoved in the corner and I wouldn't look at it. So what I ultimately want to get it is just have some sort of a dashboard on the wall that just has everything, emails, calendars, to-do lists, all that sort of stuff. But that's still a bit far out. Um, I don't think there's any good service for that yet. So the next best thing for that is going to be just to have that to-do list on my desk. And I thought about a few different solutions and the easiest one is just going to be to use this old tablet that, you know, has never really been fast enough to do anything useful on it. Um, and just to use that as a single application screen. So what I'm gonna have on this is just the Todoist app um, and I'm gonna sit that on my desk. And for that, I need some sort of a stand to prop it up. And of course you can go out and, and buy tablet stands. It's not like this is revolutionary, but um, what I just wanna show you guys today is how I designed this stand uh, with all three tools in my browser, in my web browser, um, in less than 10 minutes. This is a design that is made in a CAD tool that typically does engineering stuff, but with a few simple tricks, you can also get it to make uh, amazingly organic shapes. And the cool thing is the process I'm about to show you, it's really quick. It works in basically any CAD tool, whichever one you might be using. And yeah, it's really simple to do. So let's check it out. So the tool I'm going to be using today is Onshape and Onshape is a browser based CAD tool. Uh, it runs in basically any modern web browser and even though it is fully featured, it can, it can do like most other things any other CAD tool can do, I'm going to stick to a very simple design concept today. With most CAD tools, any design starts with a 2D sketch and that's exactly what I'm starting out with here. First off, I'm creating some reference lines for the table surface and for the rough shape the tablet's going to have, just so that I have something to work around. A thickness of 10 millimeters sounded right to me and the angle of what is basically a placeholder for the tablet looked about right to me. Next up, to get the organic shape, um, I'm using the spline tool. A spline is a freeform line that you can shape in basically any way you want. However, they can be some Somewhat hard to control like here it snaps into this wild shape that is not going to make anything useful but by moving around the control points and by playing around with these grippers on the end that basically let you control the direction of the spline I managed to get it into the rough shape that I wanted now, of course this is not final you can always come back and change this and we will do that in a second but first let's turn this into a 3d object now I can't directly go to a solid that has a depth to it instead I'm first extruding it into a surface this surface we can later take and apply a thickness to it, turning it into an object that actually has some weight to it. For this, I'm going to use the thicken tool and apply some material to the outside, since the inside is where the tablet is actually going to sit and I don't want to mess with that surface. Now to add that gusset behind the tablet, which is actually what gives this holder its strength, I'm simply adding this section of a circle to it and attaching it to the already existing shape on the holder. Now there's a neat feature that you have in Onshape and in most other CAD tools, and that is the project feature, which basically grabs a line or an edge off of your object and gives you a sketch line that you can use. And this is very important here because we're going to make this tangential to the top and bottom of the holder. For this, I also had to split up the projected line because a shape can only be tangential to something once. Once I was happy with how this looked, I grabbed the extrude tool and turned this area right here into a 5mm thick gusset. Now this still doesn't look quite as futuristic as I wanted it to. Uh, I mean, it's going to be functional, it's going to hold up a tablet or a phone or anything else you want to put in there just fine, but it's still a bit too industrial. So one tool that can make really quick work of these sharp edges is the fillet tool. And I'm adding a pretty big radius here, in this case 15 millimeters, just to ease this entire thing over and to blend it into the rest of the stand. I'm trying to use a radius as large as possible here, so I'm just playing with the values. 18 millimeters doesn't work, so 15 seems like a good compromise. Now the part is left with a few hard edges around the front and back and of course on the front face of that gusset we just added so a few more fillets are going to fix those right up. And to add the overall tapered shape to this tablet stand I'm just quickly sketching up a shape that is going to intersect with the rest of the stand so only the material that's inside both of these shapes is going to remain. And that looks about right. 
Now for exporting this part to an STL, I actually had to choose the fine resolution, which usually I don't have to, but the medium or coarse ones were showing the facets of the actual STL file way too hard um, for all these smooth curves. Once I had the STL exported, I brought it into NetFab just to lay it flat onto the build plate because we're not printing this upright, we're printing it sideways because the angle I added that taper with is not a straightforward angle. It's not 45, not 90 degrees, nothing like that. It's just some arbitrary value. And NetFab really does a great job of just picking one side and laying that flat. For slicing, I used Cura and I did have to add support material because the gusset I added kind of turned it into an unprintable part otherwise. Even if there would have been some surface scarring left on the part, you would never really see it as, you know, as soon as you put a tablet or a phone in it, uh, it's covered up anyway. The other print settings really didn't matter much. I picked 0.15mm layers, stepped down the wall thickness to be only one single line, turned down the infill to 10% because you really don't need that much strength in this part, and off to the printer it was. I printed this on the Atom 2.5 and it took about 8 hours to complete. So I'm really happy with how this stand turned out. And even though it is only like this flimsy little three millimeter lip up here, and on top of that only one shell on the outside and very little infill, it is still plenty stiff and plenty strong to hold up uh, a full size tablet. So once you wedge that in, it wedges in really nicely down here, it is plenty strong. Um, I can reach over, I can tap it, uh, I can do all sorts of things with it. Um, even though it is only intended to be a static display and not an input device. So yeah, let's hope this little tiny upgrade uh, helps me stay a bit more organized. That's something that I could most definitely use. So I hope you liked this little mini tutorial. If you want to have a look at the files in Onshape uh, for yourself, the links to that are in the video description. You can clone the entire project and play around with the design as much as you want. Uh, there's also a link to Umagine where you can just download the finished STL and print one for yourself. And as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, don't forget to hit that bell, um, and maybe even support this channel on Patreon with a dollar or two per month. That's it for today, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.